Hello, this is Austin from Milano Music, and today we'll be getting set up on the French horn. We're going to start off by opening our case. As we're unlatching it, we want to make sure that they're going up and falling down. This way, the instrument is on the proper side when the case opens up. On your case, if you're having a hard time remembering which part is the top of your case, luckily, both Milano's places a bumper sticker on the top of the case. But you'll also notice that the manufacturer will also put their information on the top of the case as well. As we pick this up, we want to make sure we're picking up from the outer ring, so that way we're not grabbing any moving parts as we pick this up. On our French horn, we have a few main parts. The first one is going to be our valves, or our rotors. And here we have our first, our second, and our third valves. And if you have a double French horn, you'll also have on your thumb the B-flat trigger as well. Over here, we have our bell. And for French horn players, we play with our hand inside our bell. On your French horn, you will have a bunch of tuning slides. Here's going to be your first tuning slide, your second tuning slide, and your third tuning slide. If you have a double French horn with these, you have a second set of tuning slides behind. On the other side of the instrument, you will have a main tuning slide. And this is what you'll use for tuning in your band or orchestra. And if you have a double horn, you'll also have your B-flat tuning slide as well. So for inserting our mouthpiece into the instrument, we want to gently place the mouthpiece in and give it a light quarter twist. We want to avoid any kind of banging or applying force on top. And then to remove the mouthpiece, it's simply a quarter turn the opposite way and lifting it out. Without the horn, we're going to start working on our first sounds, and that's going to be on our mouthpiece. With our mouthpiece, we want to have it in the middle of our lips, and either with the top and bottom half 50-50, or 70-30 with a little bit more mouthpiece on the top lip. With our lips, we want to go somewhere between a sour puckered look and a kissing face. And in between there, that's going to help us get that buzzing sound come out of our mouthpiece. The way our face forms when we play is called an embouchure. And how we form a proper embouchure for playing the French horn is we want to make sure we have tight corners and our lips are pulled so that we'll be able to create a buzz. If you're having any issues getting your first buzz to happen, maybe try tightening your corners more so that way it pulls your lips back if they're too loose at the moment. So we over, maybe over exaggerate it by giving a bit of a smile. Maybe you could also try, if there's not enough air, trying to use more air through it and really Breathing from down low in your core. Alright, so when it comes to properly holding your French horn, there's a couple things we need to cover. First of all, with our left hand, we want to make sure to have a nice curved fingers. Avoid having flat fingers all the way down the paddles, as this makes it much harder to press the keys to keep a nice rounded approach up here so you're playing on the ends of your paddles. On a double horn, you'll have a thumb trigger over here. On a single horn, instead you might have a thumb hook and your thumb goes in there just the same. Down here we have a pinky hook and our pinky simply wraps in that comfortably. And now let's talk about our right hand and how we do that while we play. First of all, we want to make a nice cup as if you're holding water or change in your hand. We then turn our hand over, and the bell rests between your thumb and index fingers along where this joint runs. So we take that pad, and we put it in there, and that's how we'll support the instrument. Now a couple of things you want to watch out for is if we try to play it with our hand the opposite way around, with the palm side facing front.
Notice a change in pitch and also a big change in the color of the instrument as well. Going back to the correct way, let's say we cup too much in our wrist and our wrist is what we call breaks or it doesn't keep a straight line with our arm. This is the sound we get with that. <laughs> So always try to keep a nice curved hand with a straight line from your wrist to your arm. Let's look at different ways we can hold the horn and be comfortable. Both on the leg and off the leg. One thing we want to make sure that we have is as we're sitting comfortably, the mouthpiece should come to us and not the other way around. If our instrument's up here, we do not want to go and find the mouthpiece. So start off by having a comfortable sitting position and we'll cover first off the leg. And that is simply going to be sitting and bringing the instrument toward you. So now let's cover how we can comfortably get the instrument to us while it's on the leg. So if it's on our leg, Right now this might seem too low. I can start by tilting the instrument up and I find a great height. But let's say we're a different height or we have an odd sized chair, we can use the position of this leg to help raise and lower the instrument as well. So if I bring my leg farther back, I can lower my leg and if I was someone shorter, I can now drop how high that instrument is. Let's say I wanted the instrument down at a lower height. Same kind of thing, I can bring that leg back up and it brings the instrument up to me at a higher height. If you've been able to get that first sound on the mouthpiece, let's move on to getting the sound on the horn. That is our C. That's, what, that's one of the most common notes we'll see on the instrument in our books. One more time. And if you didn't get a C on your first time, that's perfectly fine. There are plenty of other open notes that we can, we can play on the horn. For example, which is our G, which is our E, which is our C, which is our low G, and those would be the most common that you would play on your first time trying the instrument. So as you become more comfortable playing your instrument, being in tune is something that will be very important. And you'll notice your instrument will come with all of its slides pushed all the way in. What's something, something that's very good to do is to start by taking each slide out just a little bit, maybe a half inch. That way, the instrument is built to be in tune with just a little bit of the slide open. And we want to avoid playing with our slides all the way in for an extended period of time, as that's going to tend to make us want to play sharp consistently. These will be your three slides on the front side, and the same thing on the back, just a little bit out, and that'll be a good, a good place to start. And as you learn more about how to tune your instrument, you can go further in depth. After the end of a long day of playing, you'll notice a good amount of condensation in your instrument, and it's important to empty that out before you put your instrument away for the day. Luckily, we have water keys, and these allow us to empty the condensation out of the instrument. A great way to empty these out is to press them and then blow air through the instrument. A nice trick is to put your out lips a little bit on the outside of the mouthpiece to avoid making sounds while doing this. Now as the horn has a lot of slides and a lot of curves, sometimes that one water key won't be enough. A nice trick is going to be taking our horn and slowly moving it in front of our body. This allows the water to cycle through the instrument. After a couple turns, around, we can hold it with the bell side up and the valve side down. We can wiggle our valves a little bit, making sure all of that water can get down in there 
And what we like to do is then hold that third key as we do one more turn. Then we can let it go. Continue, continue one more turn. And what you might see is some water coming out of your bell onto the floor. So just watch out and make sure it's not on your friend or on your clothes. Finally, a lot of your a lot of the condensation should be built up in these third keys over here. And with our third one, we just want to make sure to get a nice rotation on it to get all of it out. Now, be a good time to blow air through and then hold your valves down. If you still hear any pops of water, try to see. Is it when none of your valves are pressed down? Because that's going to be somewhere in the tubing, either in, with your water key or by taking a few more turns of the instrument to empty it out of the, the bell. If the popping only occurs when one of the keys is pressed down, then the water is collected in one of these pipes and you can press your valve down as you pull them out to empty that out. All right, and now that you've emptied the condensation out of your instrument, let's safely put it away for the day. We're gonna start by taking a nice quarter twist on the mouthpiece and taking it out nice and softly and placing it in our case. Ideally, you'll notice this one already has its mouthpiece in. We want to put our mouthpiece in the hole provided so that way it doesn't move around in the case. Next, we're going to pick up our instrument and again, we want to hold it by the outer rings so we're not grabbing any slides that will be moving. We place it down nice and carefully, starting bell side in, and then rotating the rest of it through until it is nicely snug and fit without any parts sticking out of the case. We then will close our case and make sure you have all of the latches and there we go. Now we have our instrument safe inside the case and ready to go. If you're not going to be playing your instrument, it's great to put it inside your case and fully latch it to avoid any accidents or any unwanted visitors playing your instrument. If you have any questions or would like more information, please contact Milano's at 480-827-1111.